Great. Hey guys. How are we doing today? So you guys, we are filming this event today just so we have um, a video to show students who are unable to come or who had a test or a quiz um, and or for you guys to refer back to. So as you know, I'm Mrs. Barnum. I'm one of the guidance counselors, the director of our department. And today we are really excited to welcome Mr. Luke Wilson, the assistant director of admissions from Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. He is going to give a presentation today to talk about the varying careers and options and paths for health sciences. Um, so there are myriad opportunities for you guys to explore different types of jobs beyond the traditional doctor or nurse that you might think about when you think about healthcare and health science related fields. So um, let's give him your best attention and feel free to ask questions. Mr. Wilson will repeat the question for the audience at home who can't, um, who can't be here today. So just so you guys know that. Um, so speak loudly as well if you ask questions. But I'll turn it over to Mr. Luke Wilson. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate Thanks for it. having me. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Uh, so, as she said, my name is Luke Wilson. Uh, I actually am local. I grew up around here. I was actually born down the street in Lynn, and I was raised in Ipswich. Uh, so, I'm all about the ocean. I'm with you guys. I'm also astonished at how many people are clearly really awake right now. So, good for you guys. I'm glad you got your caffeine. Glad you got your breakfast in you. A um, little bit of background on me. Um, I actually did a little bit of an alternative method to get into college myself. Uh, I took a year off and I worked in construction and I knew I wanted to save up a little money before I started because I was financing my own education. Um, it's a pathway where you know a lot of students feel very pressured to know exactly what they want to do right when they're getting out of high school. It's tough, you know? And sometimes you're in that position where you're weighing a couple of things. That's okay. Just so you know, most colleges, when you're going through that process of the fall and the spring, well, real quick before I start going into this, how many of you guys are juniors? Raise your hands. All right, and the rest of you guys are sophomores. Raise your hands for me, please, so I got an idea. Okay, Ooh, lots of sophomores. This is great. Awesome. Um, so sophomores, this is a year plus removed, but for you juniors, you know, next fall and next spring, you know, you always instinctively feel some pressure because you're like, I have to figure out the rest of my life right now. You still have time where you can go and research this stuff and research the different careers you're looking to get into and still make some switches there. Most schools are pretty flexible in being able to transition between majors before classes start. So it's one of those pieces where, you know, don't feel pressured like it's the end of the world if you don't know exactly what you want to do right now. I, personally, I thought I was going to be an architect. I grew up swinging a hammer and loving construction, loving being on job sites, uh, and then I did an internship, and I really did not like working in an architect's office, uh, and it was really helpful for me. Um, but I also got another internship where I worked in a finance office. I really got interested in business, so that's what I ended up going to school for. I'd encourage you guys to do the same. Look for opportunities to either do internships, job shadowing, especially within healthcare. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to see what it's like and get that sense of, is it going to be a fit for you? Is it going to be something where you're going to want to commit to this? Because deep down, any healthcare profession, your heart has to be in it all the way. I'm going to go over that a little bit as we go through all these different careers. So reasons to pursue a career in healthcare. First and foremost, it's a growing industry. It's going to be continuing to grow. Um, one of the largest growth industries as far as the Department of, uh, or excuse me, the Bureau of Labor S Statistics are concerned. Additionally, um, just from our student population alone, we focus solely on healthcare at the Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health, uh, Health Sciences. Our median annual income 10 years after they first sit in class, not after they graduate, but after they're in class, is $116,000. So a lot of our students graduate and they're doing very well. And it's not like we only do pharmacy. We do a whole spectrum of different healthcare careers. Additionally, access to healthcare is a very big global issue. We need healthcare professionals and we need not just doctors and nurses, uh, we need all sorts of different specialists out there. Um, on top of that, it's a career that it's not like you're doing the same thing every day. Every day is something very different. Every day is something very new. Every day is a new person, you know? So you really get out there and you get a lot of different experiences and it's really exciting. So getting into the careers here, uh, if you guys wanna open up the first page of your books, I'm actually gonna be running through and we'll follow the books one by one so you can get a look at all of these. Uh, anyone familiar with an acupuncturist? Have you ever heard this before? 
ah, you typically think needles going in the skin and it's pain relief, those kind of things, which is true, but they use other methodologies too. They do variations of massage, they do variations of heat treatment. Ultimately, they wanna make sure that they're combining you know, Eastern holistic medicine of energy flow with pain management techniques that we use today in you know, all sorts of different uh, uh, techniques and methodologies. Ultimately, you're gonna to wanna to do a bachelor's degree in some form of health science in order to get that undergraduate work under your belt. And you usually need a master's degree to pair with it. So whether that's you know, a master's in acupuncture, that's what we offer at our school. Um, and there are other different programs out there. It varies based on school on what they t call them. Some call them Eastern medicine, some call them uh, Oriental medicine. It varies out there, but you know, a lot of it relates back to that pe focus of pain management and helping people overcome stress and things like that. And the salary's not bad either. Median average salary is $74,000. Chemists. My image didn't load. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so, uh, biggest thing that they do is they problem solve. Chemists are responsible for all sorts of different pieces within healthcare. They work very much so on the research side. For example, pharmaceutical chemists are absolutely essential in the development of all the different medications that come out to help people. Um, they're very essential in everything from the ground base understanding of the fundamental pillars of what chemistry are and how it could affect the human body all the way out to the R&D before anything ever touches a human. They want to make sure it's accurate and correct. Ultimately, you're going to want to look at getting a uh, bachelor's degree in chemistry if you're looking to, to pursue a career as a chemist. Um, some folks pursue master's degrees in chemistry as well, um, depending on what level of the job you want to get into. Um, the pay is also really good. It starts at 55, and you know some chemists that go and pursue that master's degree and really master their uh, curriculum and master their craft and their trade, um, they can make upwards of over $100,000 a year. Clinical laboratory scientists, a little bit different from a chemist. The big difference that you want to note between chemistry and a laboratory scientist is chemists are primarily working within that periodic table. Think more medicine development, things along those lines, while a clinical laboratory sci scientist is working with human tissue. So uh, d I I'm a big fan of Dr. Pimple Popper. Does anyone else watch that show? Yeah, I see people, yeah, love it. Um, Ms. Barnum is cringing a little bit, sorry. <laughs> so uh, every time in the show where she goes, oh, I want to find out what this is, let's send it to the lab, she sends it to these guys. These are the people that are figuring out exactly what's going on with that tissue, with that blood, and making sure that a patient is, they're ruling out diagnoses. That's a tough word to say sometimes in the morning. <laughs> but they're also making sure that they're getting things right. They don't want to misdiagnose a patient and then give them a treatment that's not going to help them get any better. Um, you're looking at a bachelor's degree in a variety of different biology pieces. For us, it's molecular biology, um, medical and molecular biology. Um, some folks do it through biochemistry. There's a lot of different pieces out there. And again, salary range is good. That's going to be a pretty common theme, as you guys see up there. Anywhere from the range of fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars, somewhere in there. Dentists. Uh, dentists work on teeth. I think everyone's had some sort of experience with them. Uh, I actually just got a crown. I'm pumped. My dentist is a man. If you guys are ever out in West Roxbury, Dr. Tim Smith. Um, but uh, they focus on more than just the, the, what you think of with regard to teeth cleaning or getting braces done or something like that. They have to be very visual on the 3D perspective. Because when they're going in there and they're testing your bite, how you come down and how your jaw matches up and how your teeth meet, um, they have to also be able to visualize how your teeth fit into your mouth, not just at the superficial of what we see when we smile, but going further up into your gums. And they have to play in all sorts of different procedures, things that, you know, they essentially have to put together dentures and, and implants for people where they literally have to go up into the gums and they have to drill in there and they have to secure that tooth. And they have to make sure when they do that, they're going to the right depths. They have to make sure that it's going to fit your bite and not clash or anything when you're biting down and when you're trying to eat your food. Um, there's a few different pathways to get into dentistry. 
Uh, some schools have a whole pre-dental program where it's pre-dentistry or something like that. Some do it through a build out of a biology program. Um, some do it built out of pre-medical, and that's how we do it at our school. Um, there are also other schools ha that have dental hygienist programs, so a dental hygiene bachelor's program, and then they compare some additional credits and additional courses that prepare you for dental school, uh, prepare you for the exams you need to get into dental school. And we do that as well. We have a dental hygiene program with a pre-dental focus. So you got a variation of different pathways on how you can get there. And earning potential is very good. You're pretty much looking at six figures your whole career if you're going to be a dentist. Health psychologist. So a lot of people think therapists when this goes into it, and that's pretty common. If you want to practice therapy, though, it's important to note that you're going to need to get that higher level of education beyond your bachelor's degree, um, either your, your, psych, uh, your PsyD or your PhD in psychology. Um, they also, though, at that undergraduate level, if you just want to get that bachelor's and begin working, um, there's a lot of folks who have ties with health psychology that go into things like social work and, and other careers along those sides. And it's not necessarily just working within uh, the sense of helping people who are sitting down and trying to figure out exactly you know, what's going on with them internally. It's also helping all sorts of different people that are just trying to plan their lives out sometimes. Um, my wife's actually a social worker. She did her undergrad in psychology, um, and she works with adults with varying developmental disabilities. Um, a lot of them need help in the everyday of understanding, you know, why this person did this on the train. You know, those things can sometimes nag at someone. So it's important that, you know, you have a variation, a different understanding of what that goes into. Earnings for the job, if you're going to go full on into therapy, they're around 70000 to 100 plus thousand. Again, you guys, if you have questions as I'm going through, don't be afraid to interrupt me as well, all right? Just throw a hand up. I'll go ahead and answer them, all right? Any questions so far on any of these things? Negatory? All right, great. Um, so medical doctors. A lot of people know what a medical doctor is. What I always like to make sure students understand is there's a whole variation of medical doctor. Not just the doctor that you may have. They're often internal med medicine specialists, physicians along that line. Um, Medical doctor is also a term that spreads out into different areas of surgery and oncology and, and literally just about everything. So some of them specialize in specific areas like orthopedics or oncology or any of those spots I just mentioned. Some of them focus on the more generalized practice of being a physician and being able to care for you know, a, a whole variety of different patients. Um, ultimately, they are sort of at the top of the food chain when it comes to health care. They need to know everything because people come to them with everything. Um, and you also have to make sure that you're always willing to take on new learning opportunities. The biggest mistake any physician could make is assuming that he knows it all. Because quite frankly, we're walking, moving, ever-changing Rubik's Cubes. Imagine if you had a Rubik's Cube where someone was secretly switching the stickers on you every time you looked away. It's kind of what it's like trying to figure out people. Um, so they have to always be looking at a whole variety of different ways and how they can treat a patient and not just go by the book because the book is sometimes not getting the root source of what's wrong. Um, ultimately, you're looking at a variety of different pathways from an undergraduate going into your graduate years. Um, we organize it as a pre-medical program. Other schools organize it as a bio with a pre-med concentration. Other schools might do it as a biochem with a different concentration. So there's a lot of options out there. It's important when you guys are looking through colleges that you sort of read through what they offer because there's a variety of different names that it could come under. Does that make sense? Wonderful. Um, and obviously, salary range, again, very well. You're looking at six figures pretty much your entire career. Um, it's also important to note that the application process going from your undergraduate into graduate years it's always something that it's a much larger build out than just what your academia was in your undergrad. So it's more than just your GPA. It's more than just, you know, a couple of things you did. It's, it's a holistic look at everything. So when you're going through those college experiences, um, you want to make sure you're taking advantage of things like service learning and, and getting out there and getting a lot of different observation opportunities, not just in one specific area. So like if you want to be a pediatrician, for example, you're th you might be thinking, well, I want to make sure I'm working at Boston Children's or I'm working at Mass General uh, within the pediatrics unit and I'm getting a lot of experience there. Yes, that's helpful, 
but you want to build that with a well-rounded situation of understanding what happens after pediatrics. So you want to make sure you get your hands and you want to make sure you dabble into a few different areas there. Does that make sense? Awesome. Optometrist, your eye doctor. Anybody in here have contacts? Awesome. It's crazy. I only see like three pairs of glasses, but I saw way more hands go up. So, um, so optometrist ultimately is the guy who's looking at your eyes, determining your prescription for your contacts, for determining on how your lenses might change. Um, my wife, is, again, I like to use my wife as an example. Uh, she has an astigmatism. It hasn't stopped changing. All she wants to do is get LASIK, and her, doctor, her optometrist keeps saying, well, your eye changed again. So it's one of those things where you want to make sure you're working with your optometrist anytime you're having these questions. If you want to be an optometrist, it's really important that you're sensitive to what people's needs are because, you know, it can be difficult when you have to wear glasses every day and put contacts in and out for for those who don't have contacts, like myself. It's a difficult thing, so you gotta be a little sensitive and you gotta listen to you, to your patients really thoroughly. Not that any of these situations don't require that. Um, but you also, a lot of the time, you're looking at probably going into private practice. So you wanna make sure you take some business courses when you're in college. You wanna make sure you get a little bit business savvy and you understand how to handle um, your regular financial and management pieces that go into running a business. Ultimately, you're also looking at a bachelor's degree if you want to go into optometry. Typically, it follows, uh, it's followed up by optometry school itself, so that's an additional four years as well. Uh, earnings are anywhere from around $83,000 all the way up to $136,000 per year. Physician's assistant. So, a fun fact that I always mention about this, and you'll see it later on when I get to the nursing side. Physicians assistants and nurse practitioners are often confused for one another. It's because they have very, very similar uh, responsibilities and authority. They can do almost everything a doctor can do short of authorizing surgery. They can actually participate in surgery, um, but they can also administer medication. Um, they can treat, diagnose, uh, they can evaluate. They can do a lot of different things. They have a lot of leeway. Um, some states even allow private practice uh, for different physicians assistants and nurse practitioners. The big difference between the two of them is ultimately the training and how they apply their practice. Physicians assistants are ultimately looking at a specialized area within medicine, like dermatology or, you know, uh, or orthopedics or something like that. While nurse practitioners are more looking at working with populations. So whether they're working with children or, or geriatric adults or something along those lines. It can vary in a lot of different areas. Um, so, you know, there's a distinction between them, but they also share a lot of those same areas. Um, fun fact, a lot of high schools and a lot of schools everywhere, they actually use nurse practitioners within their nurse's office for the most part um, because they're able to go and they're able to engage in diagnose and treat patients and things like that. Um, you're ultimately looking at a bachelor's degree program. For us, we build it out as pre-medical. Other schools build it out as a pre-PA program. Other schools build it out as a bio with a concentration. And you're ultimately looking at uh, graduate school as well that you pair with it. Um, some schools do different accelerated programs. Uh, for example, we try and organize it as a six-year program where you do three years undergrad and then three years of graduate work. Other schools will build it out where it's, you know, four years and four years, or it might be four years and three years. It could vary greatly. So it's important that you read up on all the different schools if you're considering being a PA and what, they go, uh, and what their direction and their pathway is to getting uh, and attaining that career goal. Podiatry, foot doctor. I'm sorry if you guys are grossed out by feet, but it, it sells at home, right? And a foot doctor isn't just feet. It's working with all of your lower extremities and the structural integrity of that. So much of what happens in your body really does begin down with your, you know, your legs, your ankles, your feet, and it has great effects on things like how your back works, on how your shoulders work, and your neck and your spine. So it's actually really, really essential from a career perspective because that's, you know, that's, you know, we stand, we get around, this is how we move. So someone going in and working on uh, a person's lower body is really essential for their quality of life. Um, Additionally, uh, you're looking at a similar pathway to that of like an optometrist or something along those lines where you're doing your pre-medical or bio with your undergrad. 
and then when you're going into your graduate school, you're going specifically into podiatry school. Uh, salary ranges anywhere from you know the the 80s and 90s all the way up to you know close to 200,000 in some cases. Um, public health specialists. These are the people that make sure there are policies and practices in place, and they're keeping an eye on the health of everything of the globe of their local area, um, they work within politics, they work within hospitals. Um, they are absolutely essential in how we manage different epidemics that break out. So things like, you know, uh, stuff you hear about in the news every day, like, you know, the flu going around. It's a public health uh, specialist's responsibility to make sure the public is educated on what's going on, how to prevent it, where you can get your local flu shots. Um, and they work with all these different medical professionals as well to make sure that they're communicating what that medical professional is telling so it's knowledge that's commonly known. Um, they work all the way out into environmental pieces and environmental safety as well. It really touches just about everything that can affect your health. Um, their earning potential varies, uh, and you know it's anywhere from that 75,000 marker all the way up to six figures in some cases. Um, ultimately, you can do it with a bachelor's degree in public health. Um, sometimes you can also pursue it through uh, different government policy degrees that are out there and what have you. Um, some folks go through and pursue public health uh, as a master's degree as well if they're looking to get more into the management side and the higher echelons of that. Um, you know, a common government agency that employs a lot of public health specialists is the CDC. Does anyone know what that stands for? Go ahead. Yes. So it's very important. That Center for Disease Control is where, you know, we make sure that there isn't an issue that we're overlooking. And it's not just your physical health. It's also mental and emotional health as well. Veterinarian. Um, so ultimately, veterinarian, working on doctors. I had to put a fun picture in here somewhere for you guys. I saw a lab dressed up in a coat and I said yes. Or a retriever, excuse me. Um, ultimately, you're, you know, you're working on animals, you're a doctor for animals, um, and you're going through, you're ultimately doing some form of a pre-med or a bio with a vet uh, pairing, um, and then you're going to vet school afterwards. Uh, earnings anywhere from uh, 71,000 up to 119 a year. Um, a clinical manager is someone who manages the actual clinic. So they're working with the healthcare professionals there, but they're also focused on the business end to make sure the lights stay on, the bills get paid, people get their insurance figured out. They're really the big in-between, behind-the-scenes people that figure out how these things work. Some of them even worked within the clinic before. So, for example, some nurse practitioners later on become clinical managers. Um, you're ultimately looking at a bachelor's degree. It can be in a specific healthcare specialty. So to run with the nurse analogy, you might get your undergraduate in nursing. And then after that, uh, you can get a master's in clinical management and you can run your department. Salary ranges vary based on where that role falls. So you got a pretty wide gap, 75 to 130,000 in there. Healthcare managers are focus solely on that business side. They're the glue tying everything in. They're connecting the insurance groups to the medical professionals, to the different uh, industry pieces out there and the development of different drugs and medical products and uh, all the things that go through there. So from the machines that are used to take x-rays to all the other pieces, they're the pe person that's going in between and connecting the dots, making sure those are going, uh, making sure hospitals are getting the right machines, the right equipment, connecting people to places and solutions. Um, ultimately, you're looking at a bachelor's degree in healthcare management if you're going through our school. Some schools have different business administration programs with that as a concentration. You're also looking at graduate school, likely, if you want to go into a management side of that. Um, often an MBA is looked at and pursued. For us, we have an MBA focused on healthcare management. Um, occupational therapist. This is something that you can pursue through a variation of different things. I always break down occupational th uh, therapy and physical therapy as two different things. Think physical therapy, large movement, like full, large muscle groups. Occupational therapists, they work with fine motor skills. There's often psychosocial pieces that, uh, that go into it as well. So we personally have a few different ways in how you can pursue it. You can pursue it through psychology. You can pursue it through health sciences. Um, you can also pursue it through uh, you know, public health even because all of them touch on how that goes. Um, 
Additionally, you have master's build out when, after your undergrad, um, and that also is something that can vary depending on the school and how they build it out. Earning potential also ranges greatly depending on what area that you're going in, whether it's public or private, or even if you are working within a, a private firm that focuses only on rehabilitation services. Now, physical therapy, what I was just mentioning, the other side, large muscle groups. Everyone thinks of physical therapy and they think of sports injuries and things like that. Ultimately, it goes out to very wide ranging places. Um, it's often used a lot within nursing homes. So as folks get older, they don't get up and move around as much. They need people to help them rehabilitate their hips and their joints after they get surgeries done and things like that. Um, oh, it skipped again. Dental hygienist. Did I skip another one? Sorry. Oh, yes, salary range, just so you guys can take another look. There it is, ranges. <laughs> Dental hygienists, so these are the people that are cleaning your teeth when you go into your dentist's office. Um, they really need to make sure that hand dexterity is on point for them because they're getting in, you don't want to get stabbed in the gums, so they have to do a lot of work there. Is your hand up or are you just cracking your knuckles? Oh, no, I'm sorry. no worries, you can, you can keep cracking. <laughs> um, uh, ultimately though, they do everything from taking x-rays, they have to be very personable. They're working with patients. I don't know about you guys, when I was a kid, I hated going to the dentist because my first time going, I had just had a tooth yanked out and I was nervous and scared. Uh, and I had a really good hygienist that put me at ease and I was really happy and I've liked the dentist since. Um, like I said, I gave my dentist praise early. Um, ultimately, you just need a bachelor's degree in dental hygiene in order to pursue this. Uh, and the salary range varies greatly. You're looking at 60 up to $90,000. Um, medical sonographer, that's ultrasound. A lot of people hear ultrasound and they think of, you know, going in and getting images of, uh, of a mom's baby when they're first getting ready to have that child. Um, it spreads out though. There's a lot of different application here. Ultimately, it gives you a way to look at your internal organs uh, without having to you know, be evasive really beyond just the machine itself. Um, typically, you wanna make sure that you're big into technology too because this technology is constantly changing and getting updated. Another degree, uh, uh, another career where you only need a bachelor's degree in order to pursue it. Salary ranges greatly as well, about sixty to eighty-five thousand dollars. MRI technologist, that's the big machine that you go into. You have to make sure you stand still. Very important if you want to pursue this that you have great people skills. You have to put people at ease. Not a lot of people like to go into a tube that's closed, confined space. Um, ultimately, you only need a bachelor's degree uh, in order to pursue this career as well. Um, again, salary ranges greatly, anywhere from that $50,000 mark out to the $80,000 mark. Um, nuclear medicine technologists, this is something more recent that we started to do and started to use. Another way of using imagery or therapeutics in order to treat different diseases and cases. Um, it's everything from the imaging side where you might have something injected and we can see where there's a blood clot in, along, your, uh, along your cardiovascular line out to inhaling a gas that has a specific isotope that can see how your respiratory system is functioning. There's a lot of different application here and it's actually one of the faster growing looking for different things that are out there for our folks. Again, another uh, career that you only need a bachelor's degree to pursue. Radiation therapist, this is a person that zaps cancer. This is a lot of people's angel on their shoulder. Um, I have several friends whose parents uh, still to this day, they have, they contracted cancer through one way or another. Still to this day, they keep in touch with the radiation therapists. I'm talking back when I was like in high school. And it's because you really have to be a people person here. You really have to be empathetic because you really are working to save people's lives. And it's one of the scarier things that anyone can encounter. Um, so it's just one of those things where it really is one of those careers where your whole heart has to be in it more than anything because people are looking at you to save their lives when you're going in to, reach, to work with them. Um, it's true with a lot of these careers, but especially for them because you can sort of see, the, see everything right there for them. The salary range is greatly here, anywhere in the 60s, out to over $100,000. Radiographer, it's a person that takes x-rays. I've had a lot of x-rays done. I played sports a lot growing up. Uh, a lot of broken bones, a lot of strains, a lot of pulls. Um, ultimately, you need two things. You need to be very kind and gentle and help people because they're usually sitting there, they're hurting. Uh, and you also have to be strong. You have to be able to move that equipment. It's a little bit heavier than it looks. It's not just hydraulics where you push a button and it moves. And you have to be kind. You have to work with people. Sometimes it's tough to stay still when it hurts. Uh, and you gotta work with them to do that. 
another career where you only need a bachelor's degree. Salary range uh, varies greatly here, anywhere from around 50 to up to around 75. Nursing. Just about everyone's encountered a nurse. Um, again, I mentioned that nurse practitioner. That's if you wanted to go in the higher echelons of what you're looking to do in your career. Uh, that's where you pair out your master's program. If you want to just be a straight up nurse in a specific specialized area within a hospital, you only need a bachelor's degree. Um, excuse me. Um, one thing I always make sure people understand, nursing is very fast paced and you have to be decisive. So many times people go in and they want to become a nurse because of a uh, situation they had when they were a kid and they had a great nurse, that's a one-off. Ultimately, every nurse is thrown into a situation where they have to make a decision really quick because they're the first and last line of health care for that patient. So they have to be decisive and they have to have a lot of knowledge off the top of your head. It's a lot of responsibility. Um, drug development researcher. Again, this goes back to the chemist side of things. You can specialize just within developing drugs because it is such a large industry. We actually have the second to largest uh, drug developer right in Boston. It's called Merck. Um, a lot of our students actually will do internships that are within our pharmacy science program uh, or, excuse me, or our pharmacology and toxicology. Ultimately, what you want to do is you want to keep in mind pharmacology toxicology looks at how drugs affect the body while the pharmaceutical scientist is engineering and developing that drug. Uh, you're looking at a bachelor's degree. Some folks pursue PhDs to get into the upper echelons of this. Salary ranges all, anywhere from the 50,000s up to over 100,000. And lastly, pharmacist. Important thing for pharmacists, it's not just the development and administering of drugs. It is also the importance of going through and teaching people how to use them correctly. Again, teaching people how to use them correctly. You need patience. You need to be able to connect with people. It's absolutely paramount that you know how to do that. And you're looking at a variety of different ways to pursue it. You can do it through a pre-pharmacy, out to applying to pharmacy school afterwards. Sometimes that's an eight-year process. Um, other schools have direct entry, like ourselves, where it's a six-year process, and it's guaranteed as long as you have academic progression in there. And again, salary range is good. You're pretty much looking at six figures throughout. Again, we have academic programs that focuses on all of these. I'm short on time, I wanna make sure I get you guys out of here, so just take a quick look through here. Um, some of them are graduate programs that pair out. Um, some of them are just that bachelor's degree like I mentioned before. Um, we, I also wanted to throw up some general admissions information. It's different for every school. Um, we only do early action, we don't do early decision. That means you are not bound to it, if you apply early and you get a decision early, you can still make a choice to go wherever is the best fit for you. And fit is really what I stress with you guys when you're looking at colleges. Make sure it feels right for you. Program is only one piece. You want to look at finances. You want to look at how you feel emotionally and socially there as well. Um, we only need uh, the Common App. We don't need a separate application or anything like that. The Common App is free for us. Um, in addition to that, we only need one letter of recommendation. There's space for 10. We do not need 10. Please don't send 10. That's so much reading for me to do. Um, ultimately, I'd say at the most, you need three. Uh, you know, your guidance counselor, Mrs. Barnum, will write an exceptional one for you. When you guys start doing your meetings with her, seriously, open up, talk to her about things that you've been going through. You want to explain things about yourself because we get really good information that way and we see the whole picture. You know, we want to make sure we're not making an admissions decision just based off your GPA and SAT. That's why we look for things like the letters of recommendation in your essay to explain the bigger picture. We want to know who you are. We got to make sure you're a fit for us too and it's not just those grades. Does that make sense? Any questions on general admission stuff or anything like that? All right, good. Uh, we also pair an Advantage Scholarship. Uh, I'm going to skip over this because it's a little bit down the road for you guys, um, and I want to make sure you get out of here on time and can ask questions. Um, more importantly, if you want to learn more about any of these things, you can come visit us. We have an open house coming up on April 27th. That's it. <laughs> How much time do I have for questions? I think we have five minutes. I saw you had a couple questions. Yes. At Raise a hand real quick so I can point and we can go from there. Yes, corner. If people want to pursue like a career in like operational nursing, like mm -hmm. as an operating nurse, would you have to take a different path like for like you, like you'd still pursue nursing as your undergraduate work? Um, it depends on what kind of operating room and what facility you're trying to work in. Some would prefer a nurse practitioner to be the assistant within that operating room, but often you don't just use nurse practitioners and doctors. You usually have traditional nurses in there as well. A lot of it are pieces that you specialize as you're going through your curriculum 
and you're doing different rotations. Um, so for example, what we'll do with our nursing students is we look at facility and, uh, and uh, department on what a student's preferences are, but we're also making sure they're getting a variety of experiences. Um, my sister-in-law is actually a nurse. She works in the cardiac unit up at Elliott Hospital in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, and she initially thought she only wanted to do neonatal. Then she had a clinical rotation in a cardiac unit. Uh, she saw people jumping on top of people to hammer away on their chest and bring them back to life. And she said, oh my God, I wanna do this the rest of my life. And that's what she does overnights up in Manchester now. So yeah. It's cool. <laughs> yes? So you're looking at both undergraduate and graduate work. Now the graduate work can vary depending on the school and what they offer. The way that we build it out is we have a family nurse practitioner online program. So you would do your nursing for your undergraduate work. Um, and then you could apply for that online nurse practitioner program, family nurse practitioner. Now there's a variety of different kinds of nurse practitioners out there. Like I said, they specialize by population. So if you wanna work in pediatrics, you'd look for a pediatric uh, nurse practitioner program. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome. Go ahead. Uh, so So that's another way that you could pursue it. I sprinted through that one a little bit because I wanted to make sure I had time for you guys, time for you guys to ask questions. So uh, both of them ultimately, it's how the college organizes their curriculum. It could be a biochem. Um, if a school has a specific pharmacology and toxicology program, you're probably gonna wanna pursue that. But it's also your purview of how you wanna work in drug development. Do you wanna engineer the substances and how they're applied to the patient? Because it's not just Pills. There are different, like Icy Hot. Icy Hot was ultimately developed by a drug development specialist, where it wasn't just someone who said, look, eucalyptus works. It's someone who looked at some additional pieces and put that together and realized it's better as a topical ointment than to be ingested like Advil or something like that. So if you're looking to understand what the engineering side of it is, that's where that biochem or for us, it's pharmaceutical science is what we use as our program for it. That's what you do. If you want to see how it affects the human body and the outcomes of that, that's where you're looking at pharmacology and toxicology. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Other questions? Negatory? None? Not about me? You don't want to know more about me? Okay. Um, so uh, hold on to those booklets I gave you guys. Seriously, like go back and revisit them. Anything that sparks your interest, again, I can't stress it enough, shadow. Get out there, like when you're going in for your checkup, talk to your doctors, ask them if you can even volunteer, and then usually if they see you there volunteer, they'll be more open to having you shadow, they'll have you sign a HIPAA form, you can't talk about what you see, but you can go out and see exactly what they do and what that career is, because you want to make sure you're going to like it. Um, if you want us to send you any information on any of our programs in particular, uh, I saw somebody some of you guys grab these cards. Feel free, fill it out real quick. Just give it back to me before you head out. Sound good? Awesome. Thank you, guys.